Hi everybody, this is Jeff. First thing I want to do is apologize. I haven't put any new content up in a long, long time, but that changes today. I'd like to thank all the subscribers, the older ones and the newer ones that have signed on and been patient, haven't seen any new content. That ends. I have a whole bunch of really new, and I hope useful videos for you coming up. So again, thanks again. Hey, in today's video, we're going to talk about a much maligned topic, and that's pop-up flash. We're going to use pop-up flash on a Canon 7D, and we're also going to use this, this little 90EX Canon speed light on a Canon M50. Pop-up flash is a much maligned topic, as I said earlier. Uh, you ask most photographers, they hate it. They think it's garbage, and in most cases, that may be true, but there's certain shooting circumstances where I found pop-up flash to be really, really valuable, so I want to share those with you today. So let's get on with the video. Okay, the first camera we're going to use, as stated, is a Canon 7D, and here it is shown with the pop-up flash enabled. There's a little button on the side uh, near where it says EOS 7D. There's a flash symbol there. You can't miss it. Just press that and the flash pops up. And for the lens today, we use a very inexpensive Canon Nifty 50 50 50mm 1.8 lens. This is a great lens for the money, and I've got some videos about that. You can check those above. If you've watched any of the previous videos, you know I'm a big fan of the Canon 7D, so check those videos out above. One really useful feature of the 7D is that the pop-up flash can be used as an external trigger for remote flashes. It's not a radio trigger, it's an infrared trigger, so there are a few issues with that. The biggest issue with infrared triggering is not having the remote flashes fire. If there's not a clear line of sight from the camera to the remote flashes, then chances are one or more of your flashes are not going to fire. Here's an M50 in a small rig cage with the 90EX speed light attached. As you can see, the 90EX is very small. The Canon M50 is a small camera even with a small rig cage attached. So the Canon 90EX speed light is really proportional in size to the Canon M50, which makes it nice. Unlike the pop-up flash on the 7D, the pop-up flash can't be used as an external trigger on the M50. That's where the 90EX speed light comes in really, really handy when you're using optically triggered flashes. As I mentioned in the introduction, a lot of people really don't like the 90EX speed light, but consider what it is. It's very simple and easy to use and very useful as a remote trigger. To me, this is a pretty handy little flash, and it works pretty well, the infrared trigger along with the Canon 430EX2 speed lights. I just want to note that the 90EX does not come with the little table stand that you see here. That was just part of the flash kit that I got with the 430EX2s. I also wanted to note that when you're using the 90EX as a flash trigger, the flash will fire. This pre-flash, what it does is it sends information to the other flashes, telling them how to fire. So let's take a look at the flash controls on the 7D. We'll start with the internal settings, which is for the pop-up flash, as you see here. Then we'll move on to the M50 and set it up for the 90EX flash. On the back of the 7D, press the menu button, and it's your first choice. Scroll down all the way to flash control. First, you want to make sure your flash firing is enabled, otherwise nothing will work. Then go down and select built-in flash function settings. And on the flash function setting, there's a lot of stuff. There's the flash mode, ETTL2, you have a choice of that or manual. Just keep it on ETTL2. Shutter sync is default by first curtain, keep it on that. Now we come to the absolute key setting for controlling a flash, and that's exposure compensation. Notice mine is below one. I'm always between one or two. And this is the absolute key. You'll get really good pictures with this if you keep the flash underexposed. Next is a metering mode for ETTL2, which is default evaluative. Just keep it on that. And since we're using the internal pop-up flash, we'll keep the wireless function disabled. If you want to change things and start over, just press the info button to clear all the flash settings. 
Okay, if you press the exposure compensation selection, this will come up and you just set it with your scroll wheel. Going to the right will increase flash exposure and going to the left will decrease it. Again, I always keep it decreased because this is the key to getting decent pictures with a pop-up flash. This is a simple portrait with the flash exposure compensation dialed down two stops. Unlike normal pop-up flash, there's no like red eye, there's no shiny reflections, anything like that. I'm not really advocating that you use pop-up flash for portraits, but as you can see, it produces fairly decent results. You can get much more dramatic results just by shifting the camera, tilting it. Here I held it sideways and more to the left, where you can see the light is more to the left and the shadows on the right. And again, the flash exposure compensation was dialed down to two stops. Pop-up flash is also very useful in certain shooting situations, especially with shiny objects. For a lot of my work, I use Westcott soft boxes with external flash. And look at the reflections on here. You can see the soft box right in the middle and reflected at the top of the vase. Well, this is really unacceptable. In this shot, I use the Westcott Octabox on the right, and it's even worse since it's a larger box. So it kind of shows if you're gonna shoot a still life of a shiny reflective object, then the normal soft box setup really doesn't work that well. But check this out, I use a 70 pop-up flash with the exposure compensation dialed down to about two stops. And the other little dots of light towards the top are the room lights, which I probably should have had off. But the reflection from the flash is right in the middle of that little burst of shiny light there, which is not bad compared to using the soft boxes. In this shot, I let less light into the camera by increasing the shutter speed and the aperture is at 2.8. I played around with it in Lightroom a little bit, but the thing I like about this, I like how the flash reflects from the golden figure in the middle of the vase. So, so much for the 7D. Now we'll move on to the Canon M50 using the 90EX speed light. Press the menu button, and like the 7D, it's on the first screen. Just scroll down to flash control. This may sound obvious, but make sure you have the EX90 mounted to the hot shoe and make sure it's turned on. What we're interested in are the external flash function settings, so select that. So let's take a look at what we're dealing with. In the upper left is ETTL. We'll keep it on that. You can choose that or manual. To the right of that, that little lightning bolt is wireless or disable wireless. We're going to have ours disabled since we're using the uh, 90EX on top of the hot shoe. Below that, to the left, is the first curtain, second curtain sync. We'll just keep it on first curtain. To the right of that is the exposure compensation, which I have dialed down to a stop and a third. The features below, for example, channel 1, A, B, the different ratios between the flashes, and the groups where it says A colon B, that's used for external flash. We're not going to cover that in this video. The things that we're really concerned with here are disabling the wireless where the lightning bolt is and dialing down the flash compensation. Just get it to where you like it. This is where you set the flash compensation. Just, you know, select it and then dial it either way you want to. Uh, again, I'm usually about a stop, stop and a third, all the way down to two stops sometimes. Here's a portrait very similar to the one taken before. I was fairly close and held the camera sideways to the right a little bit so I would get somewhat of a shadow on the left. I asked Barb to keep her sunglasses on so you could see the flash reflected. Similar to the vase, the little EX90 does not leave too much of a footprint reflectively. I wanted this shot to be a little bit more dramatic, so I increased the power on the flash to just around negative three quarters of a stop, moved in a little bit, and held the camera a little bit more towards the right. I got the effect that I wanted, but there is a problem with this photograph. Look at the shadow behind Barb's head. It's very pronounced. And which is unacceptable. So if I wanted to fix this, I would have to take it into Affinity Photo or Photoshop and kind of paint and blend in the back. This is a common problem when using on-camera flash. You have to be very careful at what angle you hold the camera. Otherwise, you're going to get shadows like this. Pop-up or on-camera flash is actually very useful outside too. 
This is with the 90EX dialed down just a little over one stop. This was nearing the evening golden hour, which is one hour before sunset, and there was a lot of really nice dappled light too, but I just wanted to enhance it a little bit with a fill flash. In this shot, there was a lot of natural light on the watering can, but I really wanted to bring out the flowers a little bit, and the little EX90 really did the trick for this. Same thing applies to this shot. Another good use for pop-up flash is bringing out highlights and foliage, like this. Just lower your f-stop so you can get a nice blurry background. And another thing to bear in mind, the closer you get to a subject, the more you're going to have to dial down your flash. Again, a good time to use pop-up flash is during the golden hours. That's the hour before sunset and the hour after sunrise. Pop-up flash also, at least for me, seems to bring out color a little bit better and detail as kind of in this shot. The red really pops here. This is another golden hour shot and I think the flash just helps illuminate everything a little bit and adds a little bit of drama. You know, the pop-up flash is free. It comes along with almost all cameras. So why not utilize it? I mean, it's expensive for the manufacturers to put it there, so it's there for a reason, and just use it. If you use it judiciously, and again, dial down the flash, you're gonna come out with some really good, unexpected results. So as always, thanks for watching. This is Jeff, and I'll see you soon. What? My hair is the same color as the backdrop? I can't help it, I'm getting old. <laughs>